Welcome to this video on nerve injury and regeneration. Specifically, we're going to look at the central nervous system in injury and regeneration and the peripheral nervous system in injury and regeneration. So firstly, let's just get our bearings with the images. So this one is basically looking at a peripheral nerve. So for today, let's give the example of the median nerve, which comes out of the neck and runs down the upper limb. What we have is the nerve in a longitudinal cut. So if you imagine the nerve running like this, we're looking at it like that, but I've cut it here and here, and I want you to look into it. So we're kind of looking at, at that plane. And so what you can see are these bundles of fascicles, which are basically the axons running up and down. The axons are green, the red is myelin, which I'll explain in a second. But with a peripheral nerve, basically it's just like a big power cord where we've got sensory information coming from the hand, going up into the central nervous system, into the spinal cord. And we've got motor signals going down the opposite way, down into, let's say, the fingers to move the fingers. So it's just basically a power cord going up and down in these big bundles of tracks, which we call axons. Now, the cell that myelinates a peripheral nerve, which is different to a the spinal cord is a Schwann cell. So the Schwann cell is the glial cell that myelinates each individual axons, which you can see in red. But what the Schwann cells do here to the axon, they hug them. They wrap their whole body around the axon. This provides a very close contact for myelination. And that essentially allows the insulation for the axon for the peripheral nerve. It's basically, a peripheral nerve is basically all, wh all white matter. Now let's come over to the spinal cord. Spinal cord is running up and down like this, up and down. The brain would sit up here and it's running down to the, the tail end. Again, we've done a cut here and a cut here and we're looking inwards. So you can see how it looks different to a peripheral nerve. So what we have in the middle is gray matter and on the outside we have white matter. I want you to think of the spinal cord a bit different. It's not a power cord, it's more like an elevator. So things are going up to the brain and from the brain back down, but also at each level, things are going in and out. So therefore, we've got cell bodies in the gray matter and that makes it different to a peripheral nerve because it means there's actually bodies in here, cell bodies, wherein by and large, these are just axons. Another big difference is where we do have white matter, which are the tracks going either down or up, they are myelinated not by Schwann cells, but what we call oligodendrocytes, which therefore does the myelination, which myelination is the same thing, but the way it myelinates is a bit different. Instead of hugging it, it kind of puts arms and legs out to wrap around it. And that's gonna result in a bit of a different outcome when we do have injury. What you will see here, is this is the connection between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. So where we have the gray matter, we've got the sensory areas. So this is what's coming in and the motor areas which go going out coalesce into one and that becomes a peripheral nerve, which is essentially this. And this is the kind of the communication between the two. All right, so that's their basic setup. That's their basic anatomy difference. Now we're gonna look at the injury. So with the peripheral nerve, if you had an injury, there's different types of injury we can have. Let's say I have a medium nerve here. You could have a crush injury, a squashing injury. So that kind of just squashes the nerve. Or we could have a laceration, like a slice through with a knife. Or even worse, it could lose a big chunk of nerve, which makes a big gap. Now, depending on the, what type of injury, the outcome is going to be a bit different. And I'll explain this now. But let's just start with a crush injury where it's just been squashed. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of this part. Now imagine you can see into the nerve. So these axons will be continuing through like that normally, which just go through like so. And the Schwann cells are myelinated here along like that. So where we have an injury, what happens initially is the axons become damaged and broken. Now what will happen is those axon tissue will peel off, will crumble away back to the first Schwann cell and we call this a node of Ranvier. And so step one after injury is what we call degeneration. So the first thing that has to happen is the axons have to degenerate. 
and we call this Wallerian degeneration. So the axons will break back. So now we have all these fragments of axons in the area. Okay. Now the Schwann cell that was once there, what that will do, it will detach off. So they will break off and they will start to accumulate around the debris. So this is a very important step. So what these Schwann cells will do is they will start cleaning up that debris because there's a lot of damaged tissue in that space. There's a lot of axons, there's lots of damaged cells. So they will start to clean that up, but they will also signal to their friend in the blood called macrophages, these are big Pac-Man, that will come from the blood into, into this area and start to clean it all up. And so both the Schwann cell and the macrophage will start to clean the area up, which is very important for the regeneration. So once they've done their cleanup, and this is where the Schwann cells are so amazing, they change phenotype, which means they change their function. So they go from an eating cell, but now they turn back into a myelinating cell. But before they do that, what they'll do is they'll start lining up in a long line. We call this a band. So they'll arrange themselves along like this. At the same time, the axons which are degenerated backwards to that node will start to sprout out. So they'll start to send their um, projections outwards. Now what that will do is some of them won't go anywhere. Some of them will go into bad areas and nothing will happen, but some of them will get through here. Okay, some of them will get through that gap, which means they'll be directed towards their distal or the, or the lower part. Okay, so they'll start to direct themselves down this way. And this is the most important part. So as they direct themselves to the distal part, what we see at this end is the axons here will be also degenerating. So they'll be flaking off. But as they're flaking off, this end will sense this uh, degeneration process. So as they're flaking, they leave like a chemical trace. And what this axon will do is we'll start to follow down the distal tube like so. And so they'll get directed back down that tube, which will go back down to, let's say the finger muscles or the skin or sensory organs to re regenerate that initial break. Okay, now as they start to make these connections, the swan cells will then go back to myelinating and wrap it up like so. And so when we have an injury like a crush, just crushed, it's very effective because there's no real loss of tissue and that process is very efficient. So basically when we have crush injuries in a median nerve, or sorry, any peripheral nerve, we have a very good outcome. When we have a clean cut, if it was a clean cut, basically what would happen is if the surgeon can put the two ends together really well and really closely, the outcome, just like we um, demonstrated there, can be pretty good, okay? But if it's a big gap, so if you've lost a lot of tissue, let's say you've had a really bad trauma, you've lost a lot of tissue, you can't get the ends together, what will happen is those Schwann cells can't line it up. So as you get these axons starting to sprout, they won't go anywhere and they'll become this big ball of spaghetti, which means they become a kind of a neuroma. And that the outcome there would be very poor because there's, it's not going down to the distal part. Therefore, there's no reconnection and you'll lose the sensation and the motor signals there. So that's a quite poor outcome, but that's in a big gap injury. Now let's comp compare it to the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, we still have an injury. Again, there's many types of injuries, but we'll just focus on a general injury where we just have a, a crush kind of injury. Now, the big difference is the axons, okay, which are coming through like this, okay, they are controlled by the oligodendrocytes. When we get the injury and we get the axon um, severing or breaking, Okay, they'll do the same thing as we saw here. They'll degenerate backwards. So we do get Wallerian degeneration. So we will get those axons starting to flake here. 
Okay, so there will be a whole lot of debris. But the oligodendrocytes don't really play a role like we saw in the Schwann cells. Many of them will die off, some of them will still stay around, and some might even do a bit of um, eating up, but not very efficiently like the Schwann cells. We've got some other cells there as well, which are microglia, which are um, an immune cell, but they don't really clean up either. So we've, what we end up is a whole lot of debris now. But the other level of complexity is we've got the grey matter. And remember the, the grey matter, which would be sitting in the middle, is full of other cells. So we have other neuronal cell bodies, we have astrocytes, we have fibroblasts, we have blood, blood vessels. So there's a whole lot of other cells that will be injured and damaged here. So the level of injury and debris is going to be very vast. And there's nothing to clean it up. And this is the problem. This is where it's the big difference is. In the step two, where we need the cleanup, it's not happening. So when the axons start to sprout to try and get down to their, the lower part, it can't get into it because it's coming into a mess, okay? To make matters worse, we've got the astrocytes that start to come out, and this is during a secondary injury, and they start to do a scarring process. So the astrocytes start to lay down scar tissue, which then means the axons which are trying to get down to regenerate aren't getting through, and we get a big bundle like we saw in the more severe stages of the peripheral nerve injuries. And therefore, this is why in basically any level of spinal cord severity, the outcome is much worse than we saw in the peripheral nerves. So, this takes us to what our lab group's doing, and this is our research. So what we're doing in the peripheral nerve, when we do big gap injuries, what we're doing is when we have a big gap in a peripheral nerve injury, what we're gonna do is put a conduit, so we put a special cuff, and we put our cells in the middle, particularly um, glial cells like Schwann cells, which will go into the gel, and hopefully in the big gap injury models, we can overcome this problem that we saw. Now with the spinal cord, what our group is doing also is we're putting also cells into the mix with a bridge. So we put a bridge here around it as well, but we're putting cells into this, into this gel, which not only will clean up all that debris, but hopefully remyelinate those axons more effectively like we see that with the Schwann cells than what actually happens with the oligodendrocytes. So hopefully in these two models, with the research that our lab is doing, we can overcome these hurdles and we can get a good outcome with regeneration.